These little trimellos have a story to tell about how to make rabbits, guinea pigs, chinchillas and degus happy. They contain more than 42 plants from untreated natural meadows, plus nutrients and vitamins for a perfectly balanced mix. We put nature in a new form, a huge variety in a single trimello. Rich in raw fibers and with a balanced composition, our trimellos can be fed with no worry or weigh. Just fill up the bowl and let them eat it all up. The shape is perfectly tailored to the natural chewing and eating behavior. A huge, no worries package full of plants, nutrients and vitamins combined in a single trimello. Trimello, the original. No worries, balanced feeding with Bunny. Good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you so much for attending this webinar session, and it is my honor to be here today. My name is Pim On Udi, and I'm from Lena Pet Food. I'm working as a Southeast Asia Operational Marketing and Communication Executive. And today's presentation is about market overview of pet food in Southeast Asia countries. So this presentation will be divided into three parts. I'll begin with the overview of pet food market in APAC. So we'll see the overall situation of the whole region, followed by the overview of Southeast Asia markets. And this part will give you more insight into these specific markets. And the final topic is the market trends where we will explore together all the recent and future trends in Southeast Asia. As you know, pet food market is booming in APAC, and I would like to briefly introduce to you the market situation and some important trends in APAC countries. First of all, the whole report is made and calculated based on the information in the year of 2021. For growth, we are using CAGR, which is compound annual growth rate from 21 to 26 to forecast the market growth in the next five years. We will start with the overall situation of pet population in APAC. So in general, dog population is higher than cats, but cat population uh, seems to rise faster at 4.4%. And then we have the prepared food gap uh, information of China, Southeast Asia, Thailand, Korea, Japan, and uh, Australia and New Zealand as the additional information. And I separated Thailand with other Southeast Asia countries because the information are quite different. So from the table, we can see a low prepared food rate in China and Southeast Asia, which could bring the opportunity into these countries for pet food industry. For Korea, Japan, and Australia, the penetration rate are considerably high at 60 to 95%. And here are some general pet trends in APAC. So um, young pet owners are increasing, but there is still lack of pet care and maintenance knowledge. Cat population is also rising due to easier maintenance, and it is also matches busy and urban lifestyle of the young pet owners. Finally, small, um, small size dog is also increasing to match the compact urban housing lifestyle. And it is also highly influenced by the social media and the sense of the community. Now let's move on to the market overview in terms of volume and value in APEC countries. Based on the figure, China is the largest market in APEC, both in volume and value. And it uh, it is also has the highest growth in the region by 2026. 
um, China is forecasted to dominate half of the market share in APEC. From data on the country map on your right, China has already dominated more than well, one third of APEC and is still growing fast, while Australia and Japan are struggling for growth. And from the bar shot, we can see significant trend in market volume for these mature countries as well. And this led me to the next point of category overview, which we have here dry, wet, and treat. From the product category perspective, pet food market is still dominated by, uh, by dry food, but treats and wet market is growing faster with higher potential. As you can see from the bar chart on your left, dry food accounts for the largest proportion in both volume and value, but we can see higher, uh, higher share of volume, which means that treats and wet market are more valuable than dry market. And in the next five years, market value in APAC will expand at 11% and around 9% in volume, which is a very promising market. So after a brief introduction about APAC market, we can now continue with more market insight for Southeast Asia countries. Let's start with pet population in 2021. For the first um, biggest pet, for the first pet food market in the region, here we have Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, and Singapore. And we will be seeing the CAGR on top of the graph now. So in general, Vietnam has the highest cat population followed by Thailand and Indonesia. Philippines has the highest dog population, but the growth is rather low, and followed by Thailand and Vietnam. Very small number of dogs for Malaysia and Indonesia due to religious influence. Singapore, on the other hand, is considered a small country, but very mature market with lowest pet population and growth. Following pet population insights, now let's continue with prepare food rate for cat and dogs in 2021. So in Singapore, it's very obvious from the data with very high prepare food rate for both cats and dogs, followed by Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia. For Malaysia and Indonesia, it's quite interesting that even with very small number of dog population, Around 40% of dog owners still manage to feed their dogs well. Finally, the number of prepared food rate in Viet, uh, Vietnam and Philippines are much smaller in contrast with their growth potential, which could mean the opportunity for pet industry to enter. We are now entering the part of market share. From this slide, we can see the future trends of market size and pet population in Southeast Asia. From the cargo on your right, we can see a very promising growth for the next five years with a 9% increase in value, 8% um, increase in volume, and 7% increase in pet population. On the figure on your left, Thailand uh, is the biggest pet food market in Southeast Asia. And we are pleased to see that there is still room for growth in most countries in the region, especially for Vietnam. There is also high potential, especially in value, which implies that the premiumization market is also growing. Then, if we separate pet food by categories, which are dry, wet, and treats by volume and value, we'll find that market share of dry food is around 70 to 80% for all Southeast Asia countries, followed by wet and treats. And we are seeing highest growth in the treats market. When we separate into six individual countries, we can see here that dry food dominates all markets. Our country has a bigger value of wet than treats, except for Thailand that has higher treats than wet. For market value, Thailand is the biggest, but, but, um, 
Vietnam has the smallest size of markets and trade market is growing sharply in most of Southeast Asia countries except for um, Malaysia and Philippines that dry market trend to go faster. On this slide, we will see the market share with category split for cat and dog for clearer picture in six uh, countries. As we saw from previous slide, the dog dominates this market, which much uh, higher in population. According to our data, dog food is uh, growing a little slower than cats, but it's conquered the market at approximately 70% both in volume and value. And if we split uh, pet food categories consumed by cat and dogs, we can see that the pattern here um, in the, the share in dry food is much higher than wet and treats, and of course, more wet for cats and more treats for dogs. And for this part of market share that we separated cat and dog uh, market with the category split, I will now share the pet food market insights for only three major Southeast Asia countries, which are Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia. First, for Thailand, dog dominates the market both in volume and value. However, for cat, even with um, less volume, but the margin in value is very high and the growth is very promising. And now we are moving on to Malaysia. As mentioned earlier, the majority population in Malaysia is Muslim. And in Islam countries, dogs are considered haram meaning dogs are not allowed to have as pets or food. That's why we are seeing here that the market share for dog is only one fourth of the market, but the share of volume is growing fast at 10%. While cat food dominates more than 70% of the market and has strong growth for the next five years. On the right, we can also notice that um, dry food is the high, has the highest percent pot potential to growth in Malaysia, especially in the, um, the dog market. Now let's talk about Indonesia. Even uh, with similar religious background as Malaysia, but we're not seeing big difference of market share of dog and cats here. We can see from Parishat uh, and from the previous information that even very few dog population due to religious beliefs. Dog owners still manage to feed their dog with proper diet. And category pattern is also similar to Thailand and Malaysia with highest share of dry followed by wet and treats. Next, we'll talk about price range for cat and dog food where we break down into premium price, mid price and eco price. First, for the whole pictures of Southeast Asia countries, it's very obvious that meat price dominate overall Southeast Asia markets, and more share of equal price for dog and premium price for cats. For both cat and dog markets, we can see around 50% of um, premium price in volume, but the value is as high as 30%. Premium price is also the highest growth uh, potential in cat markets, but uh, mid price for dog markets. For Thailand, we can see a very small margin of equal price in cat markets, but around 30% of equal price in dog markets. And the value of premium range of both markets are very high compared to the volume. Based on our data, premium price will also be the fastest and strongest rise in Thailand markets. For Malaysia, if we look carefully at the pie chart for cat markets, the volume of eco price for mid price cat and eco is almost the same at 40%, but mid price gained a half of market, uh, market share in terms of value. For dog markets, according to the common belief, even with uh, less dogs at, as uh, pets in the household, 
dog owners tend to feed their dog with premium food, according to um, 26% of volume share and 42% share in value. And we can see a very small share of equal price for dog food in Malaysia. In terms of growth, we are seeing promising growth of equal price in cats and mid price in dog market. For Indonesia, um, from previous information about cats, uh, despite less prepared food rate, people seem to feed their cats with a uh, proper diet for premium cat food. Even with small share around 20% in volume, but the value share is like half of the market. And growth rate for premium price very promising. We can see a very good opportunities for premium pet products in our Indonesia market. And we are now on the final part of market situation, which, uh, which is the distribution channel in Southeast Asia countries. On the left, we'll break down into store-based retailing, which are supermarkets, convenience store, and pet shop. Non-store retailing, which are e-commerce and online platform. And non-store retailing, which are vet clinics. As consumer behavior continues to be influenced, by the internet retailing and urbanization is also changing the consumer's lifestyle, causing pet owners to have less time, which ultimately leads them to simpler and faster purchasing method, which is online shopping. And the growth of the internet distribution channel is rising a lot during COVID-19 crisis. For Southeast Asia in general, store-based retailing is still the main channel but it's lately been uh, challenging by e-commerce that has 45% of forecast growth. If we break down uh, on store-based retailing, pet shops tend to have the highest margin of all. Now let's focus on Thailand. We can see large share of store-based retailing, still less margin of e-commerce, but it's growing fast at 20%. And pet owners here still, uh, still prefer to go to convenience store to get the pet food. According to our data for Malaysia, store bed retailing is also the most popular channel. E-commerce is growing extremely fast at 60%. And the margin itself is already very high at 22%. And same as Thailand, pet owners here still prefer to go to convenience store or supermarket to get their pet food products. For Indonesia, we can see the extreme growth of e-commerce at 120%. But still, it could be the effect from quarantine or lockdown during the pandemic. And now people lifestyle are gradually changing as they find it more convenient to get to to get the pet food online with other promotion and discounts uh, rather than going out risking the exposure to the coronavirus. And this has finally led us to the last part, which is pet food um, market trends in Southeast Asia. From this slide, we have split the pet cat trends into four main trend scope with our um, natural goodness, which focus on pure, better sauce and plant-based protein. Premium indulgence, which includes human grade or human menu for pets. Healthy lifestyle uh, with natural ingredients, superfood, high protein or nutrients, and has preventive care like immune system, digestion, weight management. And the last one is emotional discoveries, which are seasonal products, limited edition for special occasion, are photogenic products with the sense of social media. And according to our data and trend scope, we have rated the trends from our finding here. We found that in Southeast Asia, healthy lifestyle and natural pet food are still the mainstream trend. There are still less premium indulgence and emotional discoveries trend in general due to market condition. 
but the premium and humanization trends seems to have high potential in premium market in Southeast Asia as well. So what does it mean for natural goodness in Southeast Asia markets? So in general, after the coronavirus pandemic, pet parents are now more aware of their pet's overall well-being as a family member. So um, natural and nutritional are the key focus of pet owners when they consider to buy pet food. And pet parents um, are looking to provide their pets with long and healthy life. So pure protein source with less process or less additive and persuasive are the key here. And here are some examples for the treats that we picked from Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia that are claimed for natural goodness. For example, the products are claimed with um, natural ingredients made of real meat, 100% organic, safe for humans, free from persuasive and additive, and so on. And what about healthy lifestyle trends? For Southeast Asia, as I mentioned earlier, that pet owners are now seeing their pets as, uh, as a part of the family. So they intend for their pets to live a long and healthy life. Um, so which lead to the high demand for healthy pet food. Um, and consumers also seek personalized personalization in pet food to help provide specific care for their pets like aging, weight, health problem, and so on. The desire of pet parents to help their pets live long and healthy lives suggests that customized diet and age-specific pet food will have strong potential for the next few years. And here we have three products that are claimed for a healthy lifestyle. Uh, I picked three, uh, two dry cat food products from Thailand and Philippines and one dry dog from Thailand. The examples of claims are to help improve brain, digestion, urinary, pebble, eyesight, and overall wellness, and also provide like balance and complete nutrition to boost the healthy health signals next on premium indulgence this is also another big trend rising in the middle class at that boosts the demand of premium pet products based on our finding their rise in southeast asia upper uh, upper to middle income with high disposable income that boosts their pet ownership and there will be split in consumer behavior. Like the, um, the lower income household will seek a lower price pet food while the urban wealthy people will continue to buy the premium pet food. So nowadays with um, pets becoming like children in the modern families, this will increase the demand for human like products for pets as they are being cared for the same way as ch a child. This suggests the promising growth of premium pet care and pet food and also demand for innovation inspired by human food. And here we picked up three samples from um, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Thailand. These products are very human-like and some are human menu. Like, uh, here we have like, um, the soup, the pudding that comes with different flavors, and here is the product that uses the human grade ingredient. But the last trend of emotional discoveries in Southeast Asia. So there is now the rise in emotional health trends, which has been emerging and starting to impact the pet care market in Southeast Asia. Nowadays, pet owners are also demand the products to improve their pet mood and emotional. The growth in urbanization also comes with the shift towards smaller living space such, uh, such as apartments, uh, flats, condominium, uh, which switch to smaller and premium pets as well. 
and this resulting in the rise of humanization trend in urban area and upper class income. The pet parents have been very crucial, and they are the uh, they are treating their pets like their own children. Special treats are very important for them to celebrate special occasions and have fun activity together with the fur babies. So here we have three examples uh, of cat and dog treats from Indonesia, Thailand, and uh, Malaysia that claim for emotional discovery. The first example from Malaysia is cheese pretzel that comes with Christmas design, very creative. And then we have two uh, cat and dog products that look a lot like human products with very cute design of Hello Kitty and Shiba Inu that's very social media. Um, last but not least, let me quickly sum up the main pet food trends in Southeast Asia for you. Um, the first one is polarization of pet food. So we are seeing upper income consumers with uh, persisting power are the ones that dominate pet category in Southeast Asia in general. However, um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, consumers demand are now changing to either premium or lower price, leaving those like small room for the mid-range brands. The second trend is the health and nutrition continues as core needs. So um, nutritional is always the key focus for pet parents that look to provide their pets with long and healthy life. So they are looking for products with better source of protein, less additives with um, less, less preservative with preventive care and so on. The third one, uh, the third trend here is the rise in demand for mood boosting. Apart from the um, physical health, consumers are also concerned for their pet's mood and emotional well-being. So they started to invest more in additional pet products like complementary food and other mood boosting claims products. And here I have the last three take home points for you. The first point, um, urban and wealthy consumers are most interested in pet food with personalization options based on their pet's lifestyle, such as age, weight, indoor, weed, sterilized, and so on. The second point is um, million income class is rising, which um, boosts more pet ownership due to the increase in their in, uh, disposable income. And the last point is the um, smaller and more, uh, more premium pets is a trend for urban household, meaning more expensive small pets for compact housing and also more premium pet food. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope I have provided you with some useful information. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave the message on my chat box session or send me an email and I will get back to all your questions as soon as I can. Thank you very much.